This is what we've been doing. The News Corporation, the quest to find out what's going on with 60 or 70 News Corporation companies, Rupert Murdoch's companies in Australia, which have just had a sneaky restructure. The very top, the apogee of Rupert Murdoch's media empire, the most powerful media mogul in the world, News Corporation Inc, listed on Wall Street, two classes of shares, voting and non-voting. Rupert, of course, owns the voting shares, so he keeps control with only a, a, a minor stake in the company. This all used to be under News Australia Holdings Proprietary Limited until two days before the end of the financial year. Just after the financial year, so that they didn't have to change their financial statements, there was a huge restructure. Foxtel, Foxtel, which is 35% Telstra, 65% News through NXE Australia, off there, carved out, assets stripped, pulled out to a new company that was set up called News Pay TV Financing. That is owned by Delaware, News Australia Holdings in Delaware which in turn, somewhere up the chain, is owned by News Corporation. But this is the ultimate pen, but what we don't know is what's in here. So the old assets are all still in these two companies, split now into two, News Corp Australia, News Australia Holdings. Foxtel carved out to the side and now controlled by this company here. Who are the shareholders of News Australia Holdings in Delaware in this secrecy jurisdiction? We don't know. What Murdoch has effectively done here, he's made billions of dollars from Foxtel, which is a monopoly given, it's a monopoly license provided to him from the government. It's a great privilege to be given a broadcasting license and without apparently telling anybody, he's taken the entity which controls it and parked it in Delaware. A tax haven, or more accurately, a secrecy jurisdiction. Now we tried to, we pulled out all stops this week to try to find out what is behind this Delaware company. And we couldn't find it. The point of being in Delaware is that you don't have to disclose anything much just the fact that you are registered there. All we could find out is that there's a New York lawyer who signed uh, the lodgement um, materials. That's all. Just some guy, some lawyer from, from New York. Nobody else, no shareholders, no visibility, no nothing. Foxtel has gone to a black box with the $30 million payment from Minister Paul Fletcher the Minister for Communications from the government with the blessing of Prime Minister Scott Morrison, that 30 million cash gift from the government to cover women's sport, that money and all the other subsidies are off now to America. Why would you have a Delaware company interposed between Australia and News Corporation? You'll notice this the waves here. This is the offshore stuff in America. This is the Australian stuff below the shoreline. Why this? The only reason can be that there is something between that and this. Something else controlling Foxtel, another entity. What is it? Is it Cayman Islands? Is it Bermuda? Is it Jersey? Is it the British Virgin Islands? Is it a tax haven in the Caribbean somewhere? Is that where the money from women's sport is going that was gifted to him by the government, the taxpayer's money, the public money? We're yet to find that out. So we called the minister's office this week, spoke to his, his PR guy. Uh, and we said, look, can you tell us? Can you please tell us, uh, were you advised uh, that Foxtel has gone offshore. Bear in mind, this is the 
controlling stake. Um, the minister's office uh, kindly advised us to speak to um, the regulator, which is ACMA. We wrote to ACMA and said, well, we tried to talk to, to them, but they weren't too keen to talk, just doing written questions, hiding away there, perhaps a little bit embarrassed that they didn't know that their major client has just gone and sauntered off overseas nonchalantly. So the minister's office said, not our business. No, we're not going to tell you whether Foxtel's gone overseas or whether Rupert's told us or whether anybody at News Corp has told us or where the women's sport money has gone. None of that, none of that disclosure. You better go back to ACMA. Now we've been on many a wild goose chase over the years of this kind. This is what the job entails. But besides doing you know, ridiculous charts, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, there's another 60 entities. Besides doing ridiculous charts, we also go on wild goose chases in this job. We made a number of attempts to speak to Narita O'Loughlin. Narita, if you're watching this, it'd be lovely to hear from you, seeing that you're the highly remunerated regulator. Uh, we've been tic-tacking with them all week, trying to find out, were you notified? They ca haven't been able to confirm these guys are the sheriffs. ACMA is the sheriff for the communications companies, for the broadcasters. They have one big client, and that is News Corp, the dominant media player in the company, Monopoly, Foxtel, Monopoly pay TV provider, all sorts of other media assets, 60, 70% of the um, newspaper market, etc. So if you're the sheriff, in the small town that's Australia and you're the regulator. You've got a whole lot of stragglers in your, in your little holding pen, in your cell, in your jail. You've got a few sort of, you know, small time media operators and you've got one great big serial killer. One big serial killer you've got to look after and a bunch of petty criminals. To use the jail and we're not making any, any allegations, of course, about News Corp. It's just a colourful example. So. You've got one big serial killer that you've got to look after. You're the jailer. Just one, and then a bunch of sort of, you know, petty, petty criminals. And what's happened? They haven't looked in on the, on the serial killer for maybe months. They'd, he might have just broken out and gone on a killing spree, gone murdering a few people. Just gone off and done his own thing. What are they up to? Does the jailer know what the inmates are doing? Apparently not. So, to get back to this, the two salient points, Foxtel disappears up here, somewhere in here. What is in here between Delaware, the LLC company, News Australia Holdings of Delaware, so it's not an Australian company, it's an LLC company. What's in here? I asked Paul Fletcher, the minister. He didn't respond. I asked ACMA. They didn't respond. So it looks as though he's cleaning up News Corp for sale. And it may well be that his son Lachlan, who's increasingly taking over and putting his stamp on things, is behind this. He has radically reduced his footprint in Australia. Now, this won't come uh, as anything much of pleasure for the government because, of course, the government relies on their beautiful relationship with the News Corp editors uh, who basically act. Uh, we won't sugarcoat it. We don't have to... We, we don't have to pretend to be balanced like the ABC. It's a, it's a propaganda outfit for the Liberal Party and, and the Nationals, of course. So the government is going to hate it if Rupert blows up or if he sells. And we know that he's been in negotiations to sell his regional uh, assets, his regional press, media. Foxtel carved out, assets stripped and sent to Delaware. The regulators, 
throwing up their hands and saying, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. The minister, Paul Fletcher, the minister for communications, the Commonwealth minister for communications. Oh, I don't know. Why don't you try ACMA, see whether they know. It's a pretty hopeless effort all round.